Cyber Institute at the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. Um, the talk of the big day is uh, it's a play on Louis Shakespeare, right? Hamlet, uh, to be or not to be to ALI or not to AI. And uh, trying to figure out what the US military needs uh, in order to fight our future wars, right? Cyber war. Uh, the title I did not give the speaker committee was well, what I learned about AI from Hollywood. Because again, as Jessica mentioned from the keynote speech, whenever I'm in a, in a meeting, I usually think I'm the speaker this guy's work. So I'm actually in a very good place in my heart right now. Posture uh, tail. I like using military analogies uh, for a lot of my talks. Uh, we've seen a lot, some of my other talks uh, from other B sides. Uh, I will use lots of movies, right? That's why I use that uh, secondary title. Uh, if we think about warfare, Reality is really, I think, the really poor phase of the world, right? Pre industrial, where the enemy, or really the victor, has some type of physical advantage. Like, usually it's size, it be speed, it be agility, but some of this. Then we have this thing called the Industrial Revolution, right? Here we have resources are better, right? It's no longer just a physical attribute. If your nation, or your company, or your team generates more resources, you're going to win the worst attrition. Then came along the nuclear, right? Knowledge, right? Physics. If you have the atom bomb, you can dictate. That's why there was a space race, Mars race. Then now we're thinking about information and cyber warfare. My argument is that innovation is what we need, right? Along with just been talking about the defenders, speed of attack, speed of defense is the critical aspect here. It's not just knowledge, it's how you use that knowledge and how fast you use it. Jessica, she did a great job, right? She mentioned the uh, obstacles to attack it, right? Signals, signals, I uh, give uh, flags that come up. That's the whole notion of innovation. Now, with this background, uh, what this talk really, the genesis of this talk, came out of the event we sponsored by the assistant chair. Not only am I a research scientist at the Army Cyber Institute, I teach as well in the of Germany, and I collaborate with these uh, United States Central Command out in Fort Blair, Florida, and lo and behold, we were working on a project for a Naval War Chief Point Officer. When I first saw his email message, I thought he was just a Chief Point Officer in the Army. Lo and behold, when we desk got his picture, I said, oh, that is a Naval War Chief Point Officer. <laughs> and so we are Army cadets working. Army also working for the explosive joint one. And so we had here Austin Paul, Colvin, and Alan, Matt uh, Goldman. Uh, again, they're not mechanical engineers, they're not system engineers. Uh, what this is, every cadet at West Point has to graduate with an engineering discipline. Actually, everyone, you don't know it, every cadet at West Point graduates with a bachelor's science. So the interesting is not the cadets who graduate with a bachelor's science in math, or a bachelor's science in engineering. It's these guys, right? The Bachelor of Science in American Politics. Bachelor of Science in Philosophy. Because, because we have a required curriculum, a core curriculum that all kids have to take. And in my case, I teach a core curriculum, curriculum for system engineering. And this is the capstone experience that they undergo. Uh, in this case, it's not a year long project, for mine, it's a semester long project. And so when the cadets are trying to redefine this problem statement that uh, Chief Redding gave to us, how do we use Artificial intelligence to combat really or for terrorist organizations, violent extremist groups. What the Jets came up with as part of this uh, problem research project, their first revised problem statement, they actually gravitated toward really what Chief Ray has already identified as a potential force of action using AI to combat terrorists. I actually told them they didn't have, not have that expertise, they needed to finish this project for months. So they went back to the drawing board and came up with this final. They called them see themselves team counter violent extremist organizations, and they wanted to find the best ways, right? Not just technical, as Chief Buddy had alluded to, artificial intelligence. The best ways, both technical and not technical, to counter violent extremist groups and terrorists. <laughs> so, with that background, right, these cadets, right, they apply a bunch of these systems towards the realities. They had a qualitative model. Later on this afternoon, we'll hear about a map that took this in a quantitative model. We did the cadets did do some quantitative modeling, right, trying to get some metrics to figure out what's the best way of, of combating the climate change groups. And very quickly, some value measure graphs for those key metrics. A, at least a more quantifiable way to figure out what's the best way of, of doing the problem or attacking the problem. 
So again, maybe tell us three courses of action, right? Technical option, uh, option two, and non technical option one in the middle, some hybrid. Now, what I learned from this, right? So I'm taking what the guests did, and the great thing as an instructor at West Point, they don't give us TAs, right? All the professors teach. Uh, I had a colleague who says, uh, we don't get paid to teach us when we get that one free. It's the grading, right? It's the grading. <laughs> we get great old papers. So that's, the, that's why, for, as a research scientist at the Army Science Institute, I was able to bring these projects in uh, for undergraduate guests to tackle and they didn't take my TAs. I'm surprised no one, no one else from these guys figured that out. <laughs> it's a cadets that work on the problems for you. So what I learned really is really the di difference and the distinction between human and machine. What the advantages are for each. So I took a very low level approach to this. And again, from a human perspective, right, we're talking about critical thinking, creativity, empathy, right, social intelligence, sympathy, emotional intelligence, trust building, humor, right, telling jokes. We don't think that uh, machines believe that very well. On the machine side, we saw a lot of that from Jessica's talk, right? Processing, logic, uh, processing capabilities, procedural capabilities, calculation rates, reputational automation. And so really what AI does for us, think about it, AI is trying to put the weight of the scale, right? It's trying to compute human characteristics onto that machine side. To give us artificial intelligence, some might call it uh, machine learning, a subset of that. And this is a quote from uh, one of the DARPA's former director, previous DARPA director. This third wave of technological innovation is starting. And speaking of machinery, is that technically become us. And if you don't know the third wave, what it's really referring to, the first wave was nuclear weapons, right? The U.S. gained dominance in the uh, nuclear arms race before the weapons were done. This one, right? They do it fast. The second wave was really, again, DARPA, led by DARPA, a lot of efforts with. Uh, Ways to combat the Russian USSR's uh, mass superiority, right? The USSR, the way they thought of warfare was they still put the full of mindset. We're going to win by war. We're going to have bigger armies. With our bigger army and our bigger allies, we're going to We're going to deter you from doing a lot of action that, uh, against us. So, how do we, as a nation, how do we defeat them? They're integrated air defenses. How we get, well, we can't send bombs anymore like we did in World War II, right? They're going to shoot So, how do we get our aircraft to bomb for a cheap facility in Russia? Well, DARPA led some efforts, right? Three main ones being stealth. Right now, we can penetrate the radar system. Yeah, we don't detect our aircraft. We have precision guide missions. We don't need carpet bombing anymore. Yeah, you can you can have as much aircraft as you want. We have precision gun missions. And we just draw the gunboat. And the last thing was a drill array to the same guy with the GPS. Control position system, satellites. Now, it's our own locations. We know more information about ourselves, not only about ourselves, but again. Yeah. So, really, those three things form uh, what was the second one. We're going to have a third way of uh, innovation is this notion of uh, perhaps. Augmentation of computers with human characters and artificial intelligence. Now, uh, Wired Magazine has a very nice uh, compendium talking about really the history of AI, the key events coming. I started back in 1956 when a couple of uh, Dartmouth professors during their summer leisure activities were saying, hey, how can we actually get these computers to start being more effective at what uh, they can be possible? And it was really uh, during the 90s. And with that, uh, right, slow build, right, a lot of uh, famous universities, MIT, Stanford, uh, a lot of organizations, mostly educational institutions, trying to figure out how to get more capabilities out of the uh, Again, those all linked till today, right, I thought really today we didn't have the Cyber Grand Challenge, Dark sponsored that again uh, a couple years ago. We were trying to do autonomous network healing, self defense, autonomous recovery, autonomous healing. Uh, we have IBM's Watson. What about your cell phone? Your Alexa, who's got Alexis? Who's got Siri? I go back to Cal. You didn't hear the sound effects of it. I go back to Space Class. Don't call your AI or your computer system Cal. Cal is bad guy. Okay, for me, this was.
was a useful guide for me to understand um, <coughs> artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh, I did it this cyber field uh, so three years ago. Yeah. Uh, in a string of artificial intelligence in our career. So looking primarily at the threat last year, but then looking at really these notions of cyber attacks.
I posted it all. Even I mean, anyone see? Is that Justice League out here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, was Cyborg portrayed pretty well? I saw some posts with uh, Dr. Kusher's on. I'm a little surprised I haven't seen as many uh, Star Wars shirts. What were kind of Star Wars shirts? Because for me, the best thing that epitomizes this concern of uh, human augmentation is, you won't hear this, but uh, I always like putting in a Star Wars. I can base all my thoughts on Star Wars. So this notion of really Star Wars 4, right? The uh, Star Wars plot. Right? This whole notion that. Uh, <laughs> this whole notion that, uh, right, as Darth Vader becomes more and more mechanized, he gets right, more and more pulled to the dark side. <coughs> That's the concern we have about the uh, Now, again, we've heard all these stories, right? You can Google, just do a Google search for top AI failures. These, all these pop ups, they haven't had them uh, since 2000. It's amazing, right? We learn about all these things, right? AI yeah, robots, learn racism. Right? It's based on right, all the data today. It's how you train your AI. Martha Chain gives a great uh, precise talk on finding case decks among the people. And it's really about this. The AI at this point is not technically developed enough to where we can train it to do what we want. We have to train our AI uh, in the proper way to make sure it functions properly. But even just this talk this morning, right? We have uh, front adversaries. For adjusting their threat protocols on a daily basis to thwart potential AI possibility. Yeah, that's the reality. You just need to be aware of that. Uh, other, other things where reality is greater than fiction, right? You might remember Facebook's artificial language, right? creating its own language. Well, the other side of it, eh, they didn't really shut it down for But again, AI did something, right? The new program did something. AI did something. They, Researchers did not intend for to do. Variants, they introduced variants into the system. And it's not just in the US. Okay, here's China. China's attempt at uh, AI with their. They were actually attempting to <coughs> censor, increase the censorship of their content. And they're allowing AI to figure out what was good and what was bad, what was sponsored by the government. In this case, it actually went the opposite. Right? They actually started posting things that were contrary to the cognitive or the parties. But here's an interesting point. Uh, I actually like putting up this China one because um, I have given another talk on innovation. I've talked about innovation and speed of innovation in the last time. It's really, the way I look at it is, uh, I think the Chinese are learning when they make mistakes like this. Just like we are, right? Just like Facebook, just like Microsoft, just like Google. Whenever they make mistakes, they hey, AI, they're learning. China's learning. If you start look, looking at more and more reports of AI, I'm seeing more of it coming out of China. Right? Stanford and China, China researchers just came up with a language program that's actually doing much better. Right? Like I've seen more and more Chinese uh, researchers. And in, 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 in the reality is, right, they have hundreds of more So, uh, that's a concern. When I see them failing, that's actually not a good sign. That means they're experimenting and they're learning. Uh, they're trying to do something. And so, from the Mark Cyber Institute, uh, another way of learning more about the artificial intelligence, we do a, a thing called threat casting twice a year. And uh, we have in our audience, really, uh, actually, two of my colleagues are the key members on this threat casting group. And one of the groups that we talked about, well, one of the sessions was on artificial intelligence and what content they It's on the website there. Feel free to download it. It's on the PDF. Or do what I did. Right? I just did I just did it. I, I sort of knew what this was. Right? I just typed in Army Cyber Institute, uh, artificial intelligence, and this would pop up as I did the talk. So if you want to read more about it, it's a pretty good read. As I told my cadets when I showed them my books, it's generally a pretty good read when I uh, have tabs all over. Uh, or, I feel like that's, yeah, it could be my social media way of just telling them that I think I can read it. I think I made it through, I think I made it through college without actually reading it. It wasn't until the final exam that I actually had to read And the great news is, I think of this talk really as an introduction to uh, the Hedrick talk at 2.30 this afternoon. Because he's going to be talking about a quantitative method that he's used uh, to 
A better articulate what our future needs are in terms of artificial intelligence. So hopefully you'll come in for that and uh, get it even better. Hopefully the uh, sound for that. Now I revisit this. I know I'm getting short time now. I'm going to revisit this notion of, of what iPad or I decide to work on, what should we should be concerned about. And the reality is, how do we think cyber warfare will if that ever comes to pass? My concern, I actually am not taking this to myself, one, I think uh, right, we actually go back, right? If we actually play this out, but if we decide to work if we actually play out to its uh, finality, right, the worst case is go back to the And again, I'm not the one that coined this, right? There's a nice, uh, nice little thing. I'm not sure how this is. I really said this, but I thought it was on my uh, but for me, again, I look at movies, I like the plan of the game, so it's a nice long time. And with that, we're going to go from here to conclude the talk. Like, hopefully, what this talk um, generates here is this notion that AI is not a passive. It's not passive for all of our cyber wars. I think just a thing from that. The other thing is that instead of looking into science fiction, like I've done that a lot, I've done a lot of science fiction, instead of looking at Spock, there's really more data, right, if you're in the next generation of contact, it's really data, instead of looking at these guys, we should be looking at, especially for looking at the truly, the devoting resources for the AI, we should be looking perhaps in the first of all, how we should better train our children, our students. Uh, because my argument is that uh, for AI to truly achieve the next level, you've got to have uh, more rounded team, not just technologists. That's something we're trying to focus on the other side of the institution, more like a separate team, to help them solve some of these issues. Behavioralists, or sociologists, who can try to figure out ways to uh, get a better product, in this case, a better future. And with that, uh, I just want to thank the entire B Slides uh, team, all the folks in the, in, with the uh, park band, give them a hug, give them a high five. They do a great job. And uh, I don't think I have time for questions. I, don't have, I think I might have time for one question. So, what, I, what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll shut this down and let the other uh, the next speaker set up. The next speaker is. With that, uh, I'll field any questions. Like this mic is busted. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do my test also. What?